Allbirds sent me a pair of their all wool shoes. I put them on. They were so white and breathable and comfortable. They didn't have any fancy logos on them. They just felt good on my feet and they were nice. They looked good and they felt good. Do you know why? Because the most comfortable shoes in the world are made of all wool. Even Time Magazine said that. And they've got a couple styles. They've got the Wool Runner, which is your go-to lace-up shoe for everywhere you go. It's flexible, supportive, and so light. They take you seamlessly through your entire day, whether you're at work or you're playing at night. And they also have the Wool Lounger. It's breathable, lightweight, slip-on shoe that's perfect whether I'm traveling on a red-eye across the country or going to see a basketball game. The comfort, style, and sustainability do not have to be mutually exclusive. Allbirds is dedicated to making stylish, comfortable footwear that uses premium natural materials designed for life's everyday adventures. Allbirds textile is made from super fine New Zealand merino wool using fibers that are 20% the diameter of a human hair. So unlike the wool you may be used to, Allbirds breathable fabric regulates temperature and moisture without any itch. The holidays are right around the corner. You should consider Allbirds for a gift for someone on your list or, better yet, yourself. They're available in a variety of colors and styles. Pick the perfect pair at Allbirds.com. Want an easy way to see if you could save money on car insurance? GEICO gives you three. Call 1-800-947-AUTO. Go online to GEICO.com or stop by the GEICO office nearest you. Three ways you could save 15% or more. And now, Jalen and Jacoby on ESPN Radio. When I pop the trunk, head the dirt. Yeah, I pop the trunk, I pop the hood. Now act stupid, I'll pop the trunk. <laughs> Give me your po 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 He... Is Jalen Rose. What up, Doc? I'm David Jacoby. And on the call, check Together, we are Jalen Jacoby on ESPN Radio. What do we do? We get to find individuals that have supported this program at least five years. Exactly what they want, when they want it, when they need it. The immortals are on the wall. The flavor's on the table. Let's get it. We are just hours away from Game 1 of the NBA Finals. You will be there in the countdown suite looking down on the action for us, in our couches, watching on televisions, what should we be looking for in Game 1? The epic matchup between LeBron James, the king, four-time champ, the four-time MVP, the three-time champion, against Kevin Durant, the four-time scoring champion, who joined the 73-win Golden State Warriors for this moment, for this opportunity. The Warriors team, yes, they've lost to the Cleveland Cavaliers and LeBron James in the finals. Mm-hmm. So has Kevin Durant as a member of the Oklahoma City Thunder. And for those two guys to be regarded as the top couple of players in the league, along with Kawhi Leonard, and for them to be facing each other in the NBA Finals, just think about who's won Finals MVP recently that was not LeBron James. Small forwards, swing players, Andre Iguodala, Kawhi Leonard. Going against LeBron has been the gold standard. In the last five Finals MVP have either been LeBron James or who was tasked with covering LeBron James. So, so goes LeBron James, goes the Finals MVP. But that game one, in the very beginning, you've been in the Finals, you've been there. Is it nerves? Is it excitement? How is that first five minutes play? It should be like an Autobahn because they've had so much time off. Both teams only combine to lose one game. And usually at this point of the year, there is some level of attrition that you that does and should take place as it relates to navigating through conference playoffs and winning the conference championship and getting to the finals. And since these two teams didn't necessarily have to endure that, you have to be fortunate along the way. I mean, you look at the Cleveland Cavaliers and their role. Kyle Lowry, he was injured along mm-hmm. that run. Isaiah Thomas, he was injured along that run. Nurkic, he was down. George Hill, he was down. Kawhi Leonard, he was down when the Golden State Warriors made it through. But that's just how the game goes. But you don't get to the prize fight and complain about the undercards, especially if you get a terrific prize fight, and that's what we're going to get. That is what we're going to get. Yeah. Is there more pressure on the Warriors to win game one because they're the home team? Absolutely. It's more pressure always on the home team to win game one because yeah. the road team talks about taking both games, but they hope to get one. And if they're able to get it in the first game, now you're playing with house money. We've seen it happen in a couple of series, in particular in the East. Now, all of a sudden, the series is up in a frenzy if you're that team because you must get game two. So I think the Golden State Warriors will have that sense of urgency in game one. So you talked about LeBron James matched up with Kevin Durant. Last year, LeBron James started out covering Harrison Barnes, kind of hiding him, kind of playing center field, and then they moved him on to Draymond. Do you think he will stay covering Durant? I think 
it's mandatory that he covers Durant. I'm going to be watching something that's not something that's glamorous, but it's really going to mean a lot in this series. What's that? LeBron James foul trouble. Mm. Because you can't necessarily ask Kevin Love to guard Kevin Durant. No. No. Tristan Thompson could do it for a couple of dribbles or a couple of possessions, but you can't have a steady diet of that. And everybody else is too small or not J. good Smith enough. Smith is not covering Kevin Durant either. How about this? They're just too small or not good enough. Channing Fry is just too weak. And so now all of a sudden that has to be the mono imano matchup for the Cavs. Now when you look at Garden LeBron, Livingston, Iguodala, KD, Dave, Clay, Draymond. Draymond, they have five guys they could throw at him. And so that's what I'm going to be looking for other than the fact that we have a terrific matchup at the point guard position. Speaking of that point guard position, you've got Steph Curry there. Steph Curry, he didn't play that bad in the finals of the last two previous years, but he didn't play up to the level that he set during the regular season in other playoff performances. Going into this finals, does he feel that he has to show up? Is there pressure on him to sort of right those wrongs? Well, two years ago, LeBron was the best player in the entire series and should have won MVP. If you were going to pick a Golden State Warrior, I was in the building, I would have taken Steph Curry. But the novelty of what we just described in outplaying LeBron James, Mm -hmm. so to speak, or slowing him down became the storyline for Andre Iguodala to take it. Last year, he was injured, and they lost. So this year is almost his opportunity, I think, to show what you just said isn't accurate because that's a narrative that a lot of people are trying to run with. Do you think Steph Curry will start guarding Kyrie Irving or start guarding J.R. Smith? Do what you do. Start guarding J.R. Smith, a guy that's going to be spotting up in the corner. They're going to try to run a couple of curls off of the left block to see if they can get him to turn over his right shoulder to get a layup or to get a dunk or cause some action. But there's not going to be a steady diet of that. You put Klay Thompson on Kyrie Irving because he's the guy that can get 15, 20 points in a quarter. Mm-hmm. Could you see do them doing what they did in that famous play in Game 7, just having Jared Smith come up and set a pick so you end up getting switched? You can do that. There will yeah. be action like that. But you know what happens. You start to do that too often, your offense becomes stagnant. Mm. When the Cleveland Cavaliers struggle during this series, it's going to be a couple of times. When LeBron James isn't making free throws. Yep. When they rely too much on the isolation. And when they're settling for the threes and they're not falling versus being a team that a lot of people really don't pay attention to has the lowest points per game in the paint in the playoffs. Mm. So they have not diversified their offensive portfolio. We see them as a team that mixes it up. Really, they're a team that shoots the three and goes isolation. So if you're the Golden State Warriors and they're going to do a lot of switching of that action, yes, you'll actually take it early in the series because you have a defense that's, yeah, you have Steph Curry on the ball who's a capable defender, but now you have everybody stationary, hopefully in a position to help. When I look at the 10 people that will start the game in game one of the NBA Finals, I look at Zaza and I say, He's probably the least valuable person out there. And then I look at his backup, JaVale McGee, and say, mm, he was out of the league last year. Will they manipulate that? Like, how long can they keep that center position on the court? And do they have to? Tristan has to be dominant on the boards with his energy, his ability to keep balls alive, his activity. He's not much of a shot blocker, but he does have a big body. If he's not scoring then you can truly go to your death lineup. But regardless, the Golden State Warriors are going to do what they do. They replaced Harrison Barnes. They replaced Mo Space. They replaced Festus Azili. They replaced Bogut with Kevin Durant, who's going to present a (laughs) whole different level of problems for the Cleveland Cavaliers to deal with because, again, there's no hiding LeBron defensively. Can we talk about what I want to talk about? No plays off of LeBron. Can we talk about what I want to talk about? The chippiness, the back and forth, the trash talk, the pushing, the after the whistle stuff, the stare downs and all that. We don't usually see that till later in the series. We get some of what I love so much in game one. You will get a lot of it. And it won't be in just game one. It's going to be something that dictates almost last season who could keep their poise and not get ejected like Draymond, Draymond Green did last year when he had accumulation of technical fouls. That's what it's truly going to be. The Cleveland Cavaliers have done a great job of keeping their emotions in check, having that level of discipline. Both of these teams have a championship pedigree. I expect there to be two teams that understand the magnitude of not making that technical foul that's going to cost your team points that you can't give up, not costing your team that technical foul that turns into a double technical foul that gets you tossed from a game. Quietly, Klay Thompson hasn't really been Klay Thompson this postseason. 14.4 points a game is productive, but not usually up to his standards, and also 38% shooting from the floor. 
Will that change and how will that change? It's finals? going to change because he's had nine days off. And people have that tag tagline for him and rightfully so. But you know what they don't say along with that? How he was locking down on D. Mm. Because remember, in the first series, he had to guard either CJ or Lillard. In the second series, he had to guard Gordon Hayward. Okay, and then obviously when you're in the final series, Jonathan Simmons was a, the best player offensively on the perimeter for the San Antonio Spurs, clearly with Kawhi out. And so he was charged to guard all of those guys on a nightly basis. The first thing you asked was, is he going to be guarding Kyrie Irving? Absolutely. So he's charged with doing that, plus getting offense, and he's not necessarily getting the volume of looks that he was able to get last year because KD went from not being on the team to leading the squad and scoring. <laughs> like, that's a major adjustment when you're one of the guys that's used to getting shot. So I think he'll be just fine. Yep. LeBron James has said this before, but he said it again, and I love it so much. Quote, I will own a team someday. That's my next thing. When you hear that from LeBron for the second time, what does that tell you? You know, I'm the guy that's like, I'm not on the VIP list because I don't really want everybody to know I'm coming. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty recognizable. So when there is a line and I'm tall enough, I try to get the bouncers, the host, or somebody well, to somebody to recognize me. I've been a benefit of that before. You know, so I feel like I'm in that line trying to get a wristband. And all of a sudden, here come LeBron <laughs> and his crew, and they push me out of the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's only 30 spots. There's only 30 tables in the club. <laughs> They're all full. And LeBron's just like, clear one of those out for You know me. what I mean? Clear one of those it's out like for musical me. musical chairs. Can I live, bro? It's also like there's only 30 teams in the league, so if you look around, I don't see any owner standing up. I don't see any for sale signs outside of arenas around the NBA. Derek Jeter, who may be in a position to be a part of an ownership group with the Marlins, I'm mm -hmm. rooting for that to happen. I would love to see LeBron James and or multiple people who have the cachet and the possible leadership to oversee teams. And not only because he's one of the all-time great players like Michael Jordan, but those opportunities, as you mentioned, have a lot to do with nepotism, opportunity, and they're not available. So mm -hmm. if they become available and there's only one African-American owner in each of the four major professional sports, I would love to see LeBron James with that opportunity. But don't push me out of the line, LeBron. He's pushing you out of the line. Man, I got my VIP badge. He's, but here's the thing. LeBron's not going to own the Nuggets. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, we know what he's looking at. It doesn't work that way. You could have told me 30 years ago that Larry Bird would have ended up with the Celtics. Didn't happen. Mm -hmm. That Isaiah wouldn't have ended up in Toronto. It did happen. Magic and the Lakers, they kept their relationship in tow. And lastly, where I was really trying to go, you, would have, you could have bet anything that Michael Jordan would be part of the Bulls. Yep. Or worst case scenario, the Wizards. Good point. I thought that was part of the deal with the Wizards. As he went on to become the greatest basketball player to ever live, the individual that Larry Bird called Jesus in gym shoes, mm. you would have thought once he got finished, his future would be with the Chicago Bulls. Of course. That didn't take place. Then he went to the Washington Wizards. That didn't take place. He ended up having to buy the team from Bob Johnson, another brother, as he owned the Charlotte Bobcats, who are now the Hornets. Here's the thing I love about LeBron's statement about owning a team. Here's the thing I really love. He also noted he would continue work with his current business partners, Maverick Carter, Randy Mims, along with agent Rich Paul, were he to own a team. This is what I love about LeBron. He's like, I'm, I'm not going to leave everybody behind. He's like, this will be my group. And he also said, quote, why do I want to own a team? I think it'd be cool. I'll stay part of the game and still be able to put people in positions of power. I've always loved that, putting people in a position of power to feel like they can make a change and make things happen. He need to start watching... The actual show that returns on the 25th and see how Ghost does it. So you think that LeBron James needs to watch Power to get <laughs> leadership lessons? That's you, okay? That's not LeBron. That's, that's you, Jalen Rose. That's where you get your leadership lessons. LeBron gets that from experience, life, we need peers, and wisdom. to get Curtis 50 Cent Jackson back on the program to preview Power's return. Here's what Steph had to say about Kevin Durant joining him on the Warriors. Quote, yeah, I don't get to shoot 25 shots a game. I don't get to run 800 pick and rolls a game. Yeah, that's a sacrifice if you want to call it that. The point is to win a bunch of championships, and whatever the narrative is, it doesn't really matter. Shots fired. I don't mean to get a chance to take 25 shots like you, Russell Westbrook. 
<laughs> I don't need to get a chance to run 800 pick and rolls like you, James Harden. That's why I'm not the MVP anymore. That's why I'm not the MVP. But I like what you did there. See, I didn't even think of that when I read that quote. In these NBA Finals, of the last eight league MVPs, seven of them, people, seven years, the winner will be participating in this year's Finals. Mm. That's how star-studded it's going to be. And so, for Steph, when you get on the plane to go to the Hamptons and you have that humility to watch LeBron James and his team celebrate after trailing 3-1 on your home floor, you're like, we're going to do whatever it takes to get back there. And that's the joy, the beauty that I appreciate, not only about sports, but team sports, the ability to sacrifice for something that's bigger than yourself. Another thing in this piece, which was from the Mercury News, Steph said that after losing Game 7, he went home, was around his friends and family, and smoked a cigar. The opposite of a victory cigar. He was the most depressing, depressing cigar he's ever smoked. I can't stand cigars. I think they're disgusting. But take me into the mind of the guy that lights up the cigar at his house on the porch and goes through Game 7 after he just lost. I'm not here to judge, but anytime you light up tobacco, you're doing that to yourself anyway. Sure. Um, with that being said, it works in reverse. How do you stop yourself from not only dealing with failure, but allowing it to prolong itself in your head, within your heart, within your emotions. You got to find a way to face it head on, acknowledge it for what it is, and find a way to digest it. And so I appreciate him owning it the way he did. That truly allows you to move forward. That's something that all of us can take in our lives that have nothing to do with sports. How do you deal with the adversity that takes place? Do you continue to harbor it, or do you find a ways to release it? Face it digest it, and move on from it. I'm going to do the media thing and read too much into the next quote. Is that cool? Sure. Okay. You've only been doing this 20 years. Here's what Kyrie said. Quote, I mean, as much as I would love to say that I would love to just go one-on-one with Steph the whole entire time, it's really just about winning. I read that as, we could win if I win against one-on-one against Steph the entire time. That's how I'm reading that. I'm reading that as, we look, I would love to go one-on-one against Steph the entire time because I would score on most possessions. That's how I am seeing that quote. You cannot convince me otherwise. Kyrie and Steph will basically score one-on-one on anybody that's guarding him. Yep. What he's saying as I pull you behind the curtain is... I would love to go one-on-one with him, but the problem is neither one of us going to be guarding each other. <laughs> yeah, like, I would love to go one-on-one with him, but he won't be covering me. It'll be Clay And or vice versa. <laughs> now, don't just think all of a sudden when the game start, um, Kyrie going to be up there 94 feet slapping the floor like he Avery Bradley <laughs> guarding Steph Curry. I don't know where everybody got this whole thing that the last couple of years, because Kyrie's team won, that Steph Curry still wasn't getting buckets. There will be times where they're both on the floor and they like, you get him. You get him. And they're going to be trying to rest on J.R. Smith on the defensive end. They're going to be trying to rest on Sean Livingston on the defensive end. That's just how it's going to work out. Trying to rest on Andre Iguodala, who struggled from the three line. Trust Mm -hmm. me, you're going to have the remote in your hand. And you're going to see Kyrie standing next to him as much as you see him standing in front of Steph. Don't get it twisted. And finally, you know I picked the Cavs in six, so I'm going to say the Cavs. Who do you have winning game one? I'm taking the Warriors to come out and play a in six. And Steph Curry will be MVP. And we putting it on wax. Blue Moon is brewed with Valencia orange peel and a touch of coriander. It's a creative twist on a Belgian-style wheat ale for a taste that shines brighter. Taste responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. We're going to talk your ear off about the NBA Finals. Not just today and not just tomorrow, but for the rest of the next two, probably three weeks. But sometimes we're going to take certain segments to step away and have a little bit of fun. We'll get back to the NBA Finals shortly. But right now we have a very important epidemic to discuss. You know my thing about the kangaroo apocalypse. We've discussed it at length. Everybody understands it. There's a new animal threatening our species. A man has died, and more than 40 people are being treated for possible rabies exposure in northeast Brazil after vampire bats started feeding off humans. There are people in northeast Brazil lying in bed, just just lying asleep, and they wake up in the middle of the night, and their sheets are wet. And it was raining, so he's like, oh man, I probably have a leak in the ceiling. I actually read the whole article this time. Oh, I probably have a leak in the ceiling. There was blood all over his sheets. Vampire bats were flying into his home in the middle of the night, and eating him, sucking his blood. 
40 people have fallen victim to this. One person has died. How concerned are you about the impending vampire bat apocalypse? I'm truly concerned. It makes it reminds me of Dracula. There's a good reason for that. A real life scenario. And we talked on this program about horse head in bed mm. as it relates to the Godfather. Yeah, I would wake up. You wouldn't. And how I wouldn't wake up, especially before fourth up. or fifth grade, because I was peeing in the bed. I would wake up if a bat bit me, I think. Suck my blood. I would hope yeah. and think that if I was being bitten by multiple bats, by anything, that I would wake up. Yeah. Vampire bats. I actually read this article and saw the pictures. Not as intimidating looking as you thought. Just look like regular bats, really. I thought they'd be bigger and had bigger teeth, to be honest with you. They need better branding. Moving on. We have statue news. You remember that Ronaldo statue his head? I do. The gentleman who made that was named Emmanuel Santos. I know he took it personal because people felt like it didn't resemble. He's him an extremely at all. handsome man. He's one of the most handsome athletes besides Jimmy Garoppolo in sports, and now they made him not handsome with the statue. Well, Emmanuel I'm so Santos against. Here's the thing. It's like the Electoral <laughs> College. Jalen, Jalen. You put their pictures up, they're more alike than different. Jalen. It's the same wow. thing. You put the pictures up of the individuals that media members call handsome as gentlemen, and they all look like they're spinning images of one another. Y'all got to get off of that. Well, it's Cam Newton, Jimmy Garoppolo, and David Jacoby. Those are the three people that media <laughs> members in sports call handsome. <laughs> the dude who made that hideous sculpture of Ronaldo, Emmanuel Santos, got another gig. What? He did a sculpture of Gareth Bale as the leading senior statue analyst, not just at ESPN, but in the world. How does this guy keep getting gigs? Because a lot of times when you get contracted to do the first one and you're allowed to promote the fact that you're working on that, you automatically get other business before they see the completion of your first game. Mm, someone Googled soccer athlete statues and his name came up and there's just nothing, no other hits. And then you saw him on the news. He became famous for it. It had a big time no discussion. Press bad press, I guess. And so again, what the person did with this other high profile gear, they sent an exact picture and said, if he doesn't look like this, then we want to refund. You're going to redo <laughs> this one. Contract. That's the only thing that it cost him. Before he had free reign. This time, he has some fine print. Gareth Bale wears a man bun when he plays soccer. Had a man bun in the statue. I feel like he's going to grow to regret that. Yep. Because you can always cut your hair, but you cannot change your hair in the statue. I disagree. Because when the Fab Five have a statue at the University of Michigan... Only a matter of time. I'm going to have a ball head. Yeah, you are. I want bad skin. And you know what else <laughs> I really want? Give I him want the chip my tooth. chip... Give him the chip tooth. In each one of my front two teeth. <laughs> they have to be there. If the gentleman has veneers, I'm not going. Let's say, when this is going... You know you're getting some sort of statue. They're going to put up the bears. We all know it's going to happen in time. Hopefully you can still walk at the time that it happens. <laughs> but I won't have to wheel you out there. When it does happen, are you going to peek under the curtain to check yourself out first? I'm going to make sure he's not yeah. wearing veneers. You need some sort of approval process on this. A lot of people don't realize, like, I grew up in one of those families that going to the dermal and going to the dentist, that wasn't an option. <laughs> I shook David Stern's hand before I did both of those. Next, we have this. I popped a bump the entire night before the draft. You ever been to the Hamptons? I have. To most recent was probably 10 or 15 years ago at an You're event old. hosted by Uncle Russ, Russell Simmons. Good for you. Well, the Hamptons is it swanky out in Long Island. It's where the rich people go in New York because it's so hot in the summer. First of all, it's hot everywhere in the weekends summer. Weekends in New York when the summer In the Midwest. I don't know why you would ever go anywhere on the East else. Coast. Because a Saturday in the summer when it's sunny out is the, the New York City is the best place to be. Don't turn into a Yankee fan in one of those, New York is the greatest place in the entire world. I, I'm not going to turn it's into second. it. I've been there. Detroit's first. I've been there. Bachelors in the Hamptons are getting vasectomies. And let me tell you why. Quote, I had a vasectomy a few months ago. Having a house in the Hamptons and being fairly well off, I've encountered some problems. Women tried to get pregnant. Having a preemptive anti-gold digger vasectomy as a bachelor, soft move or boss move? Soft move. First off, I don't support those unless you just, you must do it based on health, a health concern. Well, we're going to have to discuss that because I know I'm on the board. Correct. 2018 You're is my on vasectomy the board. year. No question. We talked about it. I don't support those, number one. 
Nope. And number two, nope. I it's I mean, as a guy, you know if you stuck to landing or not. Before we you get fired. You already know before you get out of the building. Before we get fired, we're getting out of here. We be moving, you know, we keep it moving. There's a lot going on in sports media. Some of it is important. Some of it is not. We filter the difference with a segment that we call Keep It Moving. If you want to talk about it, I'll hit the brakes. If you don't, we keep it moving. Steve Kerr confirms he plans to coach next season. Hit the brakes. That is major because based on the health concerns that he's endured basically the entire season, especially the second half, it almost gave me whispers to think that, wow, if he can't coach in the biggest games of the year, maybe he can't coach that team again. So for me to hear that he's now coaching the team on a limited basis, hopefully there's a chance that he's able to coach during the NBA Finals, but even if he isn't, that he feels confident enough that he's going to be able to coach the team next year, that's terrific. I'm, I'm rooting for him, and I hope it happens. I predict he coaches game five of the NBA Finals. I hope he does a Willis Reed. I think he's going, I think it's going to be 2-2, and he's going to coach at Oracle in game five of the NBA Finals. Remember where you heard it first, Jalen and Jacoby. Gentleman who plays the mountain on Game of Thrones. You know the mountain. You know? You, the mountain. Was it? He killed What about him? No. I know squished, about Castle Grayskull. Squish the guys. Yeah, very similar to Castle Grayskull. He's like a human Castle Grayskull, right? He uh, he claims that he was robbed of his world's strongest man title. Keep moving or hit the brakes. Hit the brakes. Who has the who now has the world's strongest man title? Uh, let's see here. You know I don't like follow up questions. His name is Habfer Bjornsson. Habfer Bjornsson, very popular. And uh, on his Instagram page, Bjornsson posted a video of himself participating in the Viking press, which he claims he completed 15 reps. That would have been enough to edge him into first place, but the judges did not count his final rep, claiming that he double-dipped. So You can tell I really didn't expect you to hit the brakes on this one, right? When you, that's, that's called bearing the lead because you made me feel in the headline that it was going to be the world's strongest man losing his title. But actually, if the gentleman... Didn't get credit for all of the reps. He still has it. No, he 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 came in second. Claims he should win. But let me just somebody take everybody behind the curtain as a former ESPN producer. World's strongest man used to be on all night, every night. And there was a while where it was like we need. And again, I've been here since '99, so I've seen different sort of waves of programming. There was a while where we needed evergreen programming. Like that's why World's Strongest Man was on because it was just like you could just watch it. You know, it's just like who, who, it could be. Two, you know, 96 World's Strongest Man, 97 the World's Strongest Man, 98 World's Strongest Man. No one really cared. World's Strongest Man ran late night on the ESPN networks back in the day. What runs late night in the ESPN networks right now? Jalen and Jacoby. That's right. Lonzo Ball, Ball to hold a solo workout for the Lakers on June 7th. Keep it moving. No surprises. He's the number two pick in the draft. Albert Pujols' bid for 600 home runs goes under the radar. Big shout out, be sure, but keep it moving. We be moving, you know, we keep it moving. 600, big deal. Cubs Chris Bryant believes that there should be harsher penalties for plunking. Keep it moving. I've been talking about this moving, you know, and as it relates to baseball moving. rules versus the NFL and the NBA for years. Bryce Harper and Hunter Strickland were suspended for their roles in the brawl. Keep it moving. The only reason why we we're talking moving, about baseball you know, is because of the brawl. Yep. Mark Jackson calls Phil's time with the Knicks a failure. Hit the brakes. If you feel Jackson, just think about this. Jeff Van Gundy, Tom Thibodeau, Mark Jackson all have ties to the New York Knicks. When you get that job, Patrick Ewing, don't forget Pat Ewing. Patrick Ewing, you have to find a way to say, you know what? I can't just give the job to somebody that's in my phone that might run a triangle. I might actually give the job to somebody that I've seen have success coaching in the league. And for them not to take that layup has been head-scratching to me. Yep. The thing about Phil Jackson is he knows the game. He knows that when it's all said and done, no one's going to ever mention or remember his time with the Knicks. But you know who is going to? The people that inherit all the money he made with the Knicks. No one's going to remember this. He's not the face of Knicks. He's not sitting courtside. He's not there interacting. Like He's not really associated with this franchise the way he is with the Lakers and Bulls. And his legacy will be with the Lakers and the Bulls, not with the New York Knicks. I disagree with you because New York is a large market. 
And it's been such a colossal failure, and it's continuing to seem prolonged that it is going to have a stain more so than you truly realize. I hope so. I hope that stain is like a wine stain mixed with a blood stain and a coffee stain and never comes out no matter how much Tide and bleach you put on it. I can't stand Phil Jackson. Not only did he ruin the Knicks in the 90s, he has to ruin the Knicks in the, in the teens too. Come on, man. Next, Martellus Bennett sends Aaron Rodgers some weird texts. Keep it moving. Oh, come on. Come on, hit the brakes. Hit the brakes. Thanks for, thank you, Jalen. This is him. Quote, I send a lot of emojis and gifts and stuff like that to him. Other than that, it's just conversations. That's pretty much it. I tell him things like, I like chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> what kind of cookies do you like? What? That's how you build a bond, Jalen. That's how you build success on the field. You have to know what kind of cookies your quarterback likes if, in order for you to be successful on the field. You think Gronkowski doesn't know what kind of cookies that Tom Brady likes? I think Gronk knows a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Probably doesn't care what type of cookies that Tom Brady likes. I don't even know if Gronk knows what cookies are or who Tom Brady is. <laughs> Gronk, who's Tom Brady? He's like, man, it rings a bell. <laughs> I can't remember. Give me a beer. The Cowboys still haven't given away Tony Romo's locker. What? Keep it moving. Oh, come on. We be moving, you know I like that one. <laughs> There's no one named number nine on the Cowboys right now. There was no one wearing number nine on the Cowboys last year. Tony Romo. He's standing on the sideline holding the clipboard. He's wearing number nine. Yeah, but we didn't see him. Nope. That one touchdown drive. You'd think they, they cut away to him a lot. <laughs> after, after Dak did anything good or bad, there, there he is. I like Tony Romo. I do too. Richard Sherman calls the story. Hit the brakes. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Okay. You want to force this football topic? Let's get it. Anything Richard Sherman. Richard Sherman calls the story of friction in the locker room nonsense. It's a bunch of nonsense from anonymous sources can never put much gravity on things like that. Basically, what's being said is that there was a period of time where he felt like his future may not be in Seattle. Mm -hmm. So he allowed the team to explore options. Mm -hmm. The team acquiesced. They didn't find the proper deal that they felt would benefit their franchise. Now both seem to have to find a way to kiss and make up and move on to the future. But the level of disdain that he continues to carry, which clearly represents a lot more people in that locker room, about the final play versus the New England Patriots when they had a chance to win back-to-back Super Bowls and instead of running the football, throwing the football, I think that has now led to a lot of these conversations that we continue to have versus had they handed it off. And I'm going to say something that a lot of people don't say about that. What's that? Ain't no guarantee that Beast Mode was scoring. That's fair. Because you know what they did the first couple of plays, right? Stop Beast Mode. They stopped Beast Mode. And they sent them in reverse. So ain't no guarantee That's fair. that if they had gave him the ball, he would have scored. But that level of disdain and friction still carries the day. But he's such a terrific lockdown corner, probably along with Patrick Peterson, the Josh top Norman two in the game. To mind. So uh, you don't just trade that guy unless you're really being really careful about what you're going to get in return. You know what? I've learned most things I need to learn from the Disney movies that my son watches. And what I would tell Richard Sherman about that play and that incident is what Elsa tells me from Frozen. Let it go. Let it go. Woosa. The cold doesn't bother me anyway. Blue Moon is brewed with Valencia orange peel and a touch of coriander. It's a creative twist on a Belgian-style wheat ale for a taste that shines brighter. Taste responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Don't just subscribe to our podcast. Go to iTunes and give us five-star, 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 and leave us a review. It makes a difference. Yeah, i got to ask you something as the, the expert of many things, but in particular... How a minivan should function. Mm -hmm. To me, if everything is calm and peaceful, that doesn't embody the true experience. So for those like yourself that enjoy minivan life, shouldn't 
that experience when I pull up next to you guys at a light look chaotic? Of course. Well, Shouldn't the kids be screaming? Number one, you get this, is there's at least three to eight people in a minivan at any given time. So there is no <laughs> unanimous music that everyone likes to listen to. So the kids, are, the babies are screaming in the background, so you got to put on the baby CD. But no one else wants to hear the baby CD. you got your middle-aged kids in the middle. They want to hear Moana. You know, <laughs> I've listened to Moana soundtrack more than I've listened to any new hip hop album that's out right now. <laughs> Moana soundtrack has some bangers. Shout out to I'm Shiny. Shout out to You're Welcome. I, I've, I've gotten a little emotional listening to the Moana, Moana soundtrack. And then there's me and my wife up front. We want to hear songs, actual songs, like, you know, top 40 songs and listen to the good stuff. Another thing, you, I've got the Sirius XM Satellite Radio. You might be listening to us on Channel 80 right now. Shout out. When you want to listen to music and you've got children in the car, you can only go with the heat. You can't go to Shade 4-5. You can't go to Hip Hop Nation. You have to go to the heat where they pretend that they take out all the curses. Guess what? They're not batting a 1,000 over there at the heat. No. They're not. There's another one you go to. Symphony is a hot one for us. Classical music. Everyone seems to dig that. But one thing you don't want to do as a minivan veteran, you don't want kids eating in the minivan. Because one thing, the kids, they're loud. You want them to be quiet, you give them some food. Well, guess what? Only 20 to 30% of that food ends up in, inside the children, the rest of it inside the van. <laughs> That's why you need to upgrade your minivan to the Pacifica, which I look forward to doing, vacuum in the vehicle. If Look, if you're homeless and you're hungry, go to my house, open up my minivan. You got a full meal right there, just from the floor alone. There's a full meal on the floor of my minivan right now. Beverages, vegetables, all the food groups, everything. It is chaotic. But if you pull up next to my minivan, don't even look my direction. You know what I mean? Because I'm not racing you at all. That's what's going on in my minivan. You want to hear about what's going on in the NBA Finals? Sure. My man David Miniman covers the Cavs. Mini man. He dropped this on the TBA podcast. Dave McMiniman. Mini, mini man. Said that a Cavs player, an anonymous Cavs player, think that JaVale McGee will not be able to stay on the floor because he is not, quote, smart enough, end quote. I'm not here to perpetuate stereotypes. And JaVale McGee, when I watch basketball, regardless of what team he plays for, like a lot of players at multiple positions, isn't out there because he knows what the other 14 guys should be at all times. Exactly. It doesn't seem like he's being tasked with reading too many it offenses. It doesn't seem like when the ball crosses half court that he's navigating the other four guys where they should. Yeah, he's not Mike Singletary out there calling out what the defense should do. And so I don't no. appreciate that assessment of a player when only 4,000 individuals have been fortunate enough to participate in an NBA game. There has to be some level of discipline and intellect that goes with that. And so I scoff at that notion. And he's only playing 10 minutes a game in the playoffs. So 10 minutes a game. So you're trying to tell me he's not going to be able to stay on the floor for 10 minutes a game? A lot of these are blowouts, too, where you'd think you would get more JaVale than less of it. And also, this is more a reflection of the cast player. One, anonymous quotes, we still doing those? No, no, no. That's your man, David Miniman. My man, David Miniman, not wanting to he, wants to. he wants to go in the locker room tomorrow. Okay. You know, so, he, so he doesn't want to put a name to it because he wants to go to the locker room tomorrow. All right. Well, put your name on it. That's one. Two, for the Cavs player. Don't you realize that JaVale McGee, that is not his role? Mm -mm. In any way, shape, or form? I'm disappointed in that player that expected more. Before the end of this series, there will be a JaVale McGee game where he goes 7 for 9 and scores 18 <laughs> points, and everyone's like, it's the JaVale McGee game. But for the Cavs player, I'll tell you what JaVale McGee has to remember. Screen, roll, run, jump, dunk, rebound, and block shots. That's it. Mm -hmm. Wash, rinse, repeat. And if you get caught on a small, back up and contest. That's all. Just back up, and when they rise up to shoot, contest. Don't jump. Simple as that. We also have this. I'm curious about this one. LeBron James's home was vandalized with a racial epithet today. 
Something or nothing? Something. Not that it happened. I have to kind of... I wish I had my bat right now. I would be waving it. These things happen inherently, directly, or indirectly every day. They're just not spoken. They're not gestured. And a lot of times, they're not graffitied on somebody's home. I'm not going to act upset. I'm not mad. I'm not going to act surprised. I'm not surprised. I'm not even disappointed. I'm just happy that we're talking about it. Because that now creates progress. Mm. That now puts somebody else in a position that wanted to think along those lines to say, you know what? Maybe I should start thinking a little bit forward. And so I I am not going to give it a lot of energy and I'm not going to act like it's a major deal because unfortunately these things still take place consistently in our country. A lot of fans and a lot of people, especially people that work in sports media, pay a lot of attention of who's calling the game. Me, personally, it doesn't really change my experience too much. I think most of the people that and they're on the A-team are good at calling games. However, I particularly like Mike Breen, Jeff Van Gundy, and Mark Jackson. I think that they're an excellent trio in the booth. Yeah. How about this? I love each of them way better than they do their jobs. Such quality people. My man, Jeff Van Gundy, great mix of humor and analysis. JRLA supporter. Really? Oh, okay. When I see Jeff really? Van Gundy at the finals. Really? When I see Stan Van Gundy in Detroit, I promise. If we talk about 100 things, basketball is the last one. And there is no shortage of charitable things that Jeff Van Gundy has been asked to contribute to. There's no shortage of them. So he has to pick and choose. And I am so happy to hear that he chose JRLA, especially having visited there and understanding what good that does. Yep. Here's what he had to say. Quote, I see nothing preventing the Warriors from going to eight to ten straight finals. What? It will be a massive upset if they're not there each and every year. Well, I just talked about this. Ten straight? What? Not ten. I just talked about this, though. The Golden State Warriors are facing the Cleveland Cavaliers in the NBA Finals. We clearly know that's a best of seven series. Mm-hmm. Don't be surprised Over seven total years, these two teams actually have a real-life best of seven. Wow. One of these teams can likely win another three or four championships and or alternate over the next six or seven years. That's not breaking news. For anybody that's paying attention to the league, one team has four All-Stars in their prime. The other team has three All-Stars. Neither team has played better. How about this? Neither of those seven players have performed better. And the role players improved. So I see this thing happening with these two teams a few more seasons. Will this, in time, surpass the great Lakers and Celtics finals rivalry from the 80s? I'm not ready to say that, oh, but I, I, hope that it's, I hope that it rivals it. Remember, the golden age of the 80s, the Lakers and or the Celtics won the championship 8 out of 10 seasons. I'm anticipating that that could clearly happen with these two teams starting a couple of years ago. So excited for Game 1 of the NBA Finals. I'm so excited. There will be no shortage of and NBA Finals coverage it. across all of sports media. I'm about to lose Just hours away from the tip-off like at center court in Oracle between the Cavs and the Warriors. However, there are some very interesting things happening around the league that are overshadowed by this trilogy in the NBA Finals. This one I found interesting and I was surprised and confused by I would love to know your thoughts on it, Mr. Rose. My man Mark Stein. Stein line. Is reporting that Jerry West has already held talks with the Clippers, Steve Ballmer, and Doc Rivers about joining the Clippers in some sort of front office advisory role. What is going on? Why would you do this now? What is happening? So not to get not to get too complicated. As a die easy Knicks fan, you're going to appreciate this. This is the exact opposite of what the Knicks did when they hired Phil. How so? This is a 360 degree difference. How so? It's an owner like Dolan was that realized I need help to build my basketball team. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go to somebody that has a championship pedigree. That's what the Knicks did. Except they went after the coach. 
who has been a terrible executive. Mm. The Clippers is going after the terrific player that's also been a terrific executive, not only with the Lakers, but Memphis, as well as now the Golden State Warriors. So now when you bring him to your franchise, it validates all of the moves. If I'm Jerry West and my team is in the NBA Finals to, against the same team they just lost to last year, I'm keeping this so far off wax. I'm saying I'm not even answering any phone calls until July 1st. You guys are not going to fill this role with someone else before July 1st, so we can talk after that because right now my focus is on this championship and this team, and you have to respect that. I don't think that's fair because you Why? see coaches and assisted coaches and even players talking about their next position. You know how it works. Appreciate your position while plotting your promotion. I love that statement that you made up. Say it again. I didn't make it up. But just claim I wanna it. Make it. I want to I wanna attribute one of the great song makers in the industry. I know I talk a lot about bars, but when I put in certain CDs, Rosé continues to give me consistency. That's a Rick Ross line? That's who I got that from. Really? What? Big shout to Rick Ross. Rosé! Shout out. It still baffles me that the Clippers are looking at their team. And I'm a die easy Clipper fan too. Looking at the team, looking at their experience over the, the last four or five years in the playoffs, and they're saying, Do you know what? We're, we're Jerry West away from a championship. Because you bring in Jerry West, he's not going to play. <laughs> right? No. So he can start the process of what? Tinkering with the roster? There's only so many things you can tinker on that roster. Hit the brakes. What do the Clippers need? A three. They need a three. Is Jerry West going to play the three for them? No. So I don't know if they realize this. Pretty sure Jerry West knows this. So now he becomes the guy that probably delivers on something that they've needed the last five or six years that clearly somebody else couldn't get accomplished. Do you think Doc Rivers is driving his Tesla right now, listening to Jalen Jacoby just crash into a tree? He's like, oh, my God, we need a three-man. He knows this. He, everybody knows this. Everyone that's watched two Clippers games knows this. It's yeah. been evident for the last four or five years. Jerry West isn't going to solve that problem. You're no. underestimating him getting on the phone, however, and getting the deal done. That's what I'm talking towards. Somebody in the Clippers organization clearly could not. When you look at the lineage of players as they gotten older, from Grant Hill, Stephen Jackson, Danny Granger, Paul Pierce, Josh Smith, all played the three. Don't Matt, forget Lance. Lance got some minutes at the three for that team. They drafted a couple of guys to try to play the three. Went and got Johnson for the Lakers to try to play the three. Like they really been like Reg on a Wednesday, reaching. To try to get somebody to fill that spot. And if you don't have anybody to go against Kawhi, KD, or LeBron, you're going to be second tier. Yep. Markel Fultz has spoken with Danny Ainge, and he said he, quote, really wants to be the number one pick. Do you still think the Celtics are going to move this pick? They should. Period. Markel Fultz will probably be the number one pick. It just might not be the Celtics. I'm going to tell you guys something. I was going to kind of wait for the draft to say this. And we're going to talk about Zoball and Fultz and so many terrific prospects in this year's draft. I'm telling you who to watch for. Tell y'all who to watch for. And we put it on wax. Josh Jackson. Mm. Overshadowed a bit. Everybody talks about Darren Fox. He's going to be a player. And I haven't really decided who I'm going to compare him to. But he's going to be a lockdown defender that can play multiple positions. He can get his own shot off the dribble. He's an improved jump shooter. And he has more bounce to the ounce at the hoop. Mm. And he has toughness. See, that's one of the things I look for in the players that ain't a measurable that's going to be on the stat sheet. And so... If I'm picking number one, just in a vacuum, regardless of need, if I'm thinking I'm taking the best player, that's actually who I personally would take wow. first overall. Wow. You're saying that Joshua Jackson, in a vacuum, regardless of team needs, is the best player in the 2017 NBA draft. The most valuable. That's exciting news. Thank you for sharing it with us here on Jalen and Jacoby. When we're Eastern watching Radio. basketball in November, December, he's going to be a guy out there – Throwing them in for minutes, 
SC top 10 just banged on somebody catching the lob. Like, that's going to be his trajectory. Other players are going to have terrific situations, hopefully, that they can be productive in. But if he falls in the right spot, if I'm the Celtics and they're drafting for somebody else, don't be surprised if that team wants them to take him. Looking at you, Indiana. It is Woman Crush Wednesday, so let's listen to some female voicemails. And what happened to the other – Reg, really slacking. What happened to the other record I asked you to play, Reg? Hey, Jalen and Jacoby. This is Joy, uh, big fan, soft mover, soft move Jacoby. We love Jacoby, but as a first name for a fourth kid, soft mover boss, naming the child Jacoby, whether it's a boy or a girl. Okay, first of all, if you have a fourth kid, it's always a boss move. Yes. Fourth kid, no matter what you name it, but you can name it four. I'm number four <laughs> on my mom as well. Yeah, just name it number four. You know, you have boss move no matter what you name the kid. But Jacoby is an excellent first name. Now here's Reg coming with the music late. Well, I'm in the middle of my answer. We all have bad days, you know? Maybe Reg got a concussion too. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but Joey, to answer your question... It is definitely a boss move to name your child Jacoby. Absolutely. Because let me just be honest. I've looked, at the, I've looked at the charts. You know what I mean? I've looked at the names. I've seen how popular Jalen is. You're waning in popularity, dog. You're, you know what? Remember Chris Paul going down the escalator? Steph Curry going up the escalator? You're going down the escalator. Jacoby's going up the escalator right now. Jalen's an old name. You know, when you look, I've named a million children. When you're naming a kid, you don't want to pick the most popular name that's out. You want, a, you want, a, you want a, a name so when you're in preschool, there won't be 17 Skylers. So you don't name your kid Skyler. That's why Jacoby's on the up. Jalen's on the down. You had your day. Your day is over. But the difference between me and Chris Paul, like I said years ago, I would have stopped a commercial. <laughs> like, <laughs> wait a I minute. You too. I need to be going up, and he need to be going See, down. But I know you well enough to know is you yeah. wouldn't be standing on the table yelling. You would get somebody else to do that for you. Correct. Who your agent yes, or whoever's indeed. there no, or I'm somebody. Saying, I'm pleased to thank you to everybody. Exactly. You'd go right to the director and be like, oh, I'm so happy for the opportunity. Thank you so much, and State I'm Farm. texting I whoever I so need much. to text yeah, right you're there. you're texting everybody being like, I'm walking off the set in 30 <laughs> seconds unless they have me going up the escalator. And also, I'm not wearing Argyle. I don't care what, I don't care what, I don't care what color State Farm has. <laughs> Stay far, come out with some new commercials, man. Shout out. They don't, I'm all about progressive on this show. Stay no far, needs some new commercials. I've watched DeAndre Jordan and Chris Paul in the driveway way past DeAndre Jordan and Chris Paul were on a court. Let's just say that. And it's got to be broken news, but let me just say this. What's up? Unofficially, Chris Paul has already signed with the Clippers. You think so? You want me to tell you when? When? The day he sent out that picture with Jay-Z at SoulCycle. Mm. That was a celebratory picture. You know what? He ain't going nowhere. Someone Google this on the staff. Is there a SoulCycle in San Antonio? I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to go way out on a limb and say there is not a SoulCycle in San Antonio. There just isn't. That's the day sign. So when it's at the bottom of the ticker, how he just got $200 million from the Clippers, he signed a week ago. Jay-Z is not landing in the San Antonio airport unless there are six zeros. On the check. No soul cycles in San Antonio. Who would have ever thought? Let's listen to the next female voicemail. Hi, Jalen and Jacoby. I love watching you guys with my husband. Jalen, my husband is from Detroit, Michigan. Can you please shout him out by saying Dope Music Group? Give the people what they want. What up, though? Appreciate the shout. Always appreciate our women callers and supporters. Glad you get a chance to enjoy the program with your significant other who just so happens to represent the D. What up, Doe? The Motor City. It's how we do it. The Mitten. And I couldn't truly make out what you said. Nope. Go PE Music Group is what I heard. But either way, we wanted to make sure we gave love regardless. Of course. And Shout out. one thing I like about doing this show on various different distribution formats is when people in the street say, oh, I'll give people what they want. I always listen to the show. And some people say, I always watch the show. You know, so you can always tell sort of like which way they're taking in the show. And of course, we always love people that watch or listen. If you want to listen, subscribe to the Jalen Jacoby podcast. If you want to watch, we're on ESPN2 late at night and we're on ESPN News all night into the morning. Thank you so much for supporting. Make sure you write John Skipper 
about how much you love the show. Let's listen to the next female voicemail. This is Sarah from Monmouth, Oregon. Jalen and Jacoby, this is my first time listening to your podcast. My boyfriend, Alonzo, got me to listen, and I really like this segment. So soft move or boss move? Bringing in your own drink from a coffee shop into Denny's. Because I did that. I support this behavior. Boss move. I support this behavior because here's what the thing. You're not bringing in a Starbucks coffee into Denny's and sitting there and just drinking the Starbucks coffee. You're going to eat the Denny's food. So if, if anybody looks at you sideways and says, oh, no outside food or drinks, and say, do you know what I'm going to do? Eat a lot of inside food. This is an outside drink. And if you could make a coconut milk latte with two pumps, then I would order one here. But you know what you have? Drip coffee. Decent drip coffee that comes in that little mug. But that's all you have here at Denny's. There was a couple weekends in a row where I went to Denny's way more than I should have. <laughs> way more than it's I'm proud of. It's kid-friendly. It's very kid-friendly. But it took a little too long to food I prefer to get there. a Waffle House. All day. Yep. Waffle House? All day. Do you know what? I'm just going to... Do you mind if I <clears throat> say something blasphemous right now? I like Waffle House. Waffle House needs to spread throughout the country. Why is Waffle yeah. House regional? Like, it's, do, I, do you think people in New York don't like delicious breakfast foods? I'm going to tell you what it is. Do you think people in California don't want covered and smothered? I'm going to tell you what it is. What is it? Scattered, smothered, and covered. I'm going to tell you what it is. What does scattered mean? The hash browns. Okay. Here's what it is. It's almost like when you watch the Chappelle show and they do a black draft. Mm-hmm. We just hold on to certain things. <laughs> I don't want to give it up. Almost like rap music. We <laughs> did it for so long. Waffle House is not cultural, Jalen. And then no, all of a Waffle sudden, House is not cultural. Then all of a sudden, whoop, there it no, is happening. No, no, no. Tag team back again. <laughs> Waffle House and rap is not, You can't have Waffle House. Forever. No, you cannot. Waffle House is for everybody, Jalen. We're drafting Rose. that. No, you cannot draft We're drafting no, that. No, no, no. Yeah. David Stern just vetoed that. <laughs> David Stern like just came Chris in Paul and vetoed trade. that. Like the Chris Paul trade. He's <laughs> like, no, no, no. Waffle House we is can't for have the that. people. No, you guys have Denny's. We'll take Waffle House. Y'all can have Roscoe. Because I do not need fried chicken on top of waffles. Okay, you can have Roscoe's all day long. We trick Waffle House is for everybody. Waffle House is for everybody. Can I tell you guys something? What? We tricked you. They didn't. That's just the equivalent of somebody having a Bloody Mary. They just want to drink before eight a.m. So it looks like hey, it's a V A <laughs> drink. Breakfast, it's breakfast okay. fried chicken. Yeah, breakfast fried chicken. It's the exact same thing. We wanted a reason to eat fried chicken. <laughs> So give me some waffles, too. <laughs> I'm going to even eat the waffles. Just give me the fried chicken. Because it ain't breakfast without eggs anyway. Thank you. Which came first, fried chicken or the fried egg? Egg. Jalen Rose, we have a simple motto on this program since the very first day we did it, and that motto is... Part of giving the people what they want is... Going on to our Twitter feed, taking questions from you, our listeners. Our 1-800-Flower Twitter feed is at Jalen and Jacoby. Send us questions. We answer them every single day. Ask anything. First question we have this is a great question from Anthony Smith. Who will be the next team other than the Cavs or Warriors to win an NBA championship? I got this one. Who will be the next team other than the Cavs or Warriors to win a championship? I have to say the Spurs. I have to say the Boston Celtics. You've got a team with a lot of young pieces, with with you know with a potential Gordon Hayward. He's eyeing Gordon Hayward's eyeing the Celtics over there. The Celtics' best player, if they're going to win the East, is not on their roster. That's what I'm saying. But you've got Danny Ainge, who I believe is a good general manager. He's got a lot of picks, a lot of young players who could quickly have a championship caliber team next season and if not next season in two seasons. Hit the brakes. I got excited, Jalen. Who are the number one seed in the East? Boston Celtics. Have you ever seen a number one seed that literally didn't have a shot to win like the Boston Celtics this year? Their best player got hurt. Before he got hurt? They had a shot. What shot? 7% chance? If BPI is giving Cleveland Cavaliers <laughs> there's a 7% chance, the Celtics had to have at least like a 4 Okay. Who did you pick to win a championship last year? Cavs. What about in December? Cavs. What about when the playoffs started? Cavs. What about when they were trailing 3-1? Cavs. I think BPI gave the Cavs like a 30% chance to come out of the East, too. Who's the best player in the Cavs? Whoever, whoever made up BPI is definitely a Warriors fan. That's all I have to yes. say. LeBron James. Okay. Is he slowing down? 
No, peaking. I don't see LeBron James has made it to seven straight NBA Finals. That number could easily get to ten. So the Celtics will be waiting. The answer to the question is the Celtics. The answer to this question is so the team talk about the Spurs. in game one that was up 25 before their best player let's got injured. Let's talk about the Spurs, Mr. Rose. You're going to pick holes in my argument. Who's the best player in the Spurs? Kawhi Leonard. Who's the second best player in the Spurs? He's not on the roster if they're going to win a championship. Who's the second best player in the Spurs right now? Currently, LaMarcus Aldridge. I rest my case. Okay, but I you, rest but, my case. But your team was getting thumped. The entire series, but I give them credit for the game they won, gave them a chance to say goodbye to their fans, which a lot of people overlooked, and gave them a chance to say bye to Isaiah Thomas, who endured so much personal tragedy and success this year. I was happy to see that that was able to take place back on their home floor. But in game one, the Spurs was thumping the war. They sure were. And people talk about the playoffs being a breeze. It wasn't a breeze until Kawhi got hurt. Because that was going to be a long series. So the second you best can't player in the Spurs say, is Coach Popovich, and you know it. <laughs> He's the second best so player So you in the can't Spurs. feel like they're not in the mix. Patty's going to be a free agent. It's interesting to see what's going to happen Deadman's with him. Deadman's going to be a free agent. Jonathan Simmons is going to be a free agent. Not that these guys are key cogs in the wheel, but, like, you know, some. They have Pop. They have Kawhi. Takes more than that, Mr. Rosen. You know that. That's, that's about all they got. Next is from Nate. Soft move or boss move. Tearing a piece of gum in half to save some for later. Soft move. Here's the thing. A piece of gum's not enough. I need two pieces. I need two paces to have a real gum experience. One Soft piece of gum move. doesn't get it done. Soft move. Half a piece of gum, that disintegrates in your mouth. Plus, I have cavities and veneers, so I can't do the gum. Really don't chew gum? Then for the gum chewers out there, I'm going to say this. I'm going to ask you this question to our listeners. What is the average amount of time that you keep a piece of gum or two pieces of gum in your mouth? Like some people go for like a two-minute gum chew. Some people go for like a 20-minute gum chew. (laughs) I'm like a three, four-minute gum chewer. They lose flavor for me real quickly. You know what? Feel free not to hit me back about that one because that's a dumb conversation. Next, Anthony Smith. How many years do you think it will realistically take for the Lakers to be contending for championships again? When you get these questions, you know this person lives in Southern California. (laughs) I got a flat answer. I'm I'm going to over-under. I'm going to say over at least five, if not more. Five? I mean, contending for a championship, there are how many teams did we say at the beginning of the season expected to win a championship? And this is where I defend the NBA when people talk about the quality of the season. I hate to break it to media and fans, but each year in training camp, there are only a couple of teams that look left and look right and say, realistically, if we don't win the championship, this season is a failure. And when are the Lakers going to be one of those teams? Something like a decade. And this year, the only three teams were the Cavs, the Warriors, and the Spurs. If the Clippers made it to the conference finals, it might be a pr- parade out on the Olympic. Mm-hmm. The Boston Celtics don't celebrate being the number one seed and making it to the conference finals. That's just how this landscape works. Great question from one of our favorite tweeters, Childish Poetry. Jalen, do you still buy fast food even though you are rich? Of course. I mean, duh. Who? 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 You think Taco Bell doesn't taste good because you got a million dollars? I, like, yeah, stopped, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love McDonald's you know, breakfast. Five Guys Burger doesn't I was just taste walking good. Walking through McDonald's, had a McDonald's breakfast at the airport the day before yesterday. You're not having toast with caviar and cream cheese every morning delivered to you by someone in a negligee. Mm, no. That's not how it works. I'm already ready to give me a fat burger with egg after this show. That's gross. I don't like eggs on burgers. I don't like that. Don't mix. Don't mix the poultry with the beef. Don't do that. You know what? I either want a chicken fajita or a steak fajita. Don't give me the combo fajita. You sound like you're doing porn. Don't mix the poultry with the beef. Next question we have is from Alex. Alex is a good question. Who is the Warriors' big three? In other words, who's better, Draymond or Clay? I'd take Clay if I'm starting a team from scratch. They don't have a big three. That's what makes them unique. They have a fantastic four. I would say Draymond is more valuable to that team than Klay Thompson. That's fair to say. He's more valuable because there's a drop off when he's not in the game you based really have on to get what down he to needs it, to do. You're like Steve Kerr, like you know, you got to start voting people off the island. Well, here's why. I'll make it even more simple for everybody. You can have a death lineup with Iguodala and Livingston instead of Clay. 
Mm-hmm. You can't have one without Draymond Green. But that being said, Clay is so valuable for this team for reasons that you've described earlier. He's their lockdown defender in the front court. Because if either one of those guys aren't there, they can still make up for you got Stephen Curry and Kevin Durant. You can make up you can make up for the points, right? But you cannot make up for the defense that both of they bring to the floor. Finally, we have one final question from Uncle Mar. Soft move or boss move? Letting my kids watch the movie Chucky to scare them because my sister did it to me. First of all, it's called Child's Play. Second of all, (laughs) I watched Child's Play way too early, and I remember to this day having nightmares about it. I remember specific nightmares I had about that movie. Do not show this movie to your kids. I agree. Don't show it to the kids. And that movie had such a profound impact on one of my favorite rap groups and one of their members, Bushwick Bill. Made a song called Child's Play. Yep. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for listening on ESPN Thank Radio, you. for watching on ESPN2 and ESPN Thank News, you. and subscribing to the Jalen and Jacoby podcast. Thank you. You're far too kind. We are-